there are four pillars, four of them, to building a lasting long-term relationship of results with food and with your body, meaning that you have peace and harmony and you're in control with food and you have acceptance and love for your body and you're able to reach and maintain a happy place with your weight. There are four pillars to achieve this and I'm about to share them with you. Hi, I'm Carrie Nygaard. I'm here with your weekly brain management 101 thought as it relates to food and body. This is where I take what we know about the brain and leverage it to our benefit and we apply it to food and body so that we can be at a place where we're no longer dieting, where we're no longer struggling, but that we're at a place of peace and freedom with food and with our bodies. Here are the four pillars. The first one is called body partnership. You must realize that you are not your body. You're not. Your body rather is your holy vessel that houses you as you journey throughout time on this earth. At some point, you're going to die, right? If there's anything that's assured, we're all born into this life and we all die to leave this life. We're born, we receive a body. When we die, we separate from our body, but we exist separate from our body. And so we have to view our body not as ourselves, but as a holy partnership. We need to be in body partnership. When you're in diet mentality, you're always fighting against your body. If she could just cooperate, if she could just do what she's supposed to do, if she could just release this weight, then I could finally feel the way I want to feel. But this is so backwards and it's the very setting for a toxic relationship, okay? Because you're housed within your body, this is a holy symbiotic relationship. So not only does your body live because of you, but you live because of your body. You need each other in order to be here among the living. So when you view your body as your partner and begin to treat your body as your partner, then we stop these vicious cycles of self-rejection, self-deprecation, shame, all the things that weigh us down and keep us in cycles of diet mentality that never lead to lasting change. Maybe short moments of perceived progress, but long-term they do more damage than good. Okay, so we have to view our body as our partner. That's pillar number one. It could also be considered the foundation because this is the part that has to be established. This is the big thing that all diets are missing. The second thing is called emotional awareness. As adults, we think that now that we're adults that we are great at adulting, but one thing that most of us are not very good at is being aware of what an emotion is and what to do with an emotion. And as a result, we go throughout life trying to solve for our emotions through lots of different um, uh, buffering behaviors. A buffering behavior is a behavior that like um, tries to solve for your emotions. It's a behavior that you use to try to give distance or to distract yourself from your emotions. Um, and so often we stress eat or, see the lighting's a little better over here. Oh, we stress eat or we, um, uh, we emotional, we eat emotionally. And when we do this, we're trying to solve for our emotions with the food. But the truth of the matter is that food's not a very good tool for doing this. It might distract us for a short little bit, but it does more harm than good in the long run um, when we apply it as, as we do when, in regards to our behaviors around um, emotional eating, such as restriction and then binging or uh, binging when no one's around, right? Or stress eating, right? These types of things don't act, they actually aren't helpful. They're just a short term distraction, but in the long run, they don't solve for the thing. And the thing is the emotions. We need to learn what to do with our emotions and to know how to feel them, what they are. And the first step to doing this, I'll just, this is a huge course in of itself um, that I teach, but the, the actual very first thing to understand is that an emotion is just a sensation to be felt in your body. We tend to have all this drama up in our brains, up in our minds, all these thoughts about spinning out and what this emotion could mean and fear of this emotion overtaking us. I call it the Wizard of Oz effect, right? When Dorothy went to go see the Wizard of Oz for the first time, she was terrified because she thought that the Wizard of Oz was this all powerful being. But then she learned that it was just a man with a microphone behind a screen with some special effects. This is very much so the way that we interact with our emotions. We're scared of them. We don't want them to overtake us. We feel sad and we think if we actually allow ourselves to feel sad that the sadness will overtake us. 
the truth is, and this is backed by science, is that the neurochemicals that are released, right, that are released and that are, go to the cells that create that emotional response last no more than 90 seconds unless we continue to feed it thoughts that continue to trigger that same reaction over and over and over. So when we can allow our bodies to just process an emotion, which is just a sensation somewhere in your body, and everybody experiences different emotions differently in their body, then we can solve for the emotion. Then we know what to do for the emotion and we don't need food to try to distract us or try to solve for it. So that's a big one. Not only that, um, emotional awareness is important, not only just to be able to um, uh, know what to do with our emotions so that we're not eating, emotionally eating, but also the urge to eat in of itself is an emotion. So we can process the urge to eat in the same way that we process any emotion. All right. The third thing that we can do in order, um, or the third pillar rather, to find peace and harmony with food to end food and body struggles is thought work, thought management. We need to be aware of what's going on in our minds. So often we are at the effects of every single thought that we have. When the truth of the matter is that our thoughts are just sentences running through our minds. They are not facts. And once we can realize that they're not facts, then we're able to discard thoughts that to not believe them. When we believe thoughts, right, then they become true to us, but they're not, they're just thoughts. And so your experience in your life is, is the quality of your life is only as good as the quality of the meaning that meanings that you attach to your life. And how do we attach meaning to the different facts in our life is with our thoughts, your relationship with food, your relationship with your body and the results that you have right now with food and body is a direct result of the thoughts, the meaning that you've attached to those things in your life. So we have to change your thinking. Right? And there's some powerful tools that are science-based that can help you with this. The fourth thing, right? So we have body partnership, emotional awareness, thought work or thought management. The fourth thing is sustainable habits. What happens is when we go on a diet, we adapt someone else's plan, right? We do a big pendulum swing, right? We take the pendulum, we swing it far this way. We make all these changes and we might result in releasing some stored energy off our bodies for a period of time. But in order for it to be long-term, in order for it to stick, in order it to be just who we are, we have to, instead of doing pendulum swings, we have to make shifts that are in harmony with where we are currently at because your mind does not like big changes. It hates it and it will not tolerate big changes for very long before there's a pendulum swing the other way, right? If you pull this pendulum this way, it will swing far the other way. And so instead of pendulum swings, right, um, we make shifts. This way, your brain doesn't go into survival mode because we're restricting food, right? The restricting binge cycle. But this way we are at harmony knowing that all food's abundant and we're making choices for reasons that we like and not from places of scarcity. All right, so those are the four pillars that hold up everything that you want to receive results-wise as it comes to food and body. Those can feel like really big things, like, oh, I have to change everything in my life, but you don't. A little bit of awareness and just a little bit of work intentionally in these areas with techniques and skills that are very effective, bring big results. A little bit goes a long way. Check the description to learn more about free workshops that I have coming up. Um, like and subscribe and listen to more of my YouTube videos. Thanks so much. Bye-bye.